Okay, so this is a really remarkable sword. The hilt is 17th century, Ingo, what do you say? 16th, 17th. 16th, cent uh, 17th century hilt. And um, this hilt is mounted on a 13th century blade. According to Oksha, that would probably be a type 12 blade. Yeah. yeah. And um, this is a really obscure piece because it has a complete calendar that is inlaid or uh, uh, rather um, carved into the blade if you just turn it it's, it's etched it's etched oh okay i see all right and you have the uh, original inlays of the sword blade running under the etching oh okay so the original can you point this out to me so the original it, it blade had, yeah the original blade had inlays an inlay um it's it's inlaid with uh, probably um brass you see it here uh, um characters some figure characters and the next and it's going under the calendar that has been oh, okay. etched on top of it oh, okay so i see i will turn it yeah. the same here here you have uh, rests of the old inlay of the blade um, ending somewhere here and the calendar is etched over it yeah, and uh, ingo already said it um, these edgings uh, they are a calendar so here, this is December. Yeah, and you have the dates, or the, the, the days with their names. Because every day has a um, saint. Patron saint? A patron saint. And this is the names of the patron saints. Okay, so saints. it first tells us which day of the month it is, and then it lists up the according saint. So basically this is a calendar that uh, gives us all the saints for the various days of the year. Yeah. And this, those have been popular over a short period in the 17th century. Oh, I see. But this is just a showpiece or something, like this, or do you think that it was used for anything? I mean, it's a sh mostly they are showpieces. Uh, sometimes they have been used as hunting swords. Oh, I see. Yeah, but uh, what is most interesting for our purposes is the fact that this is an actual medieval blade, so it's a 13th century blade, and um, it does show signs of wear, because you can see, um, if you just stand up again, please, so I can film over your shoulder. Yeah, yeah this is good. So if we look at this blade in perspective, then you can see um, a part of the blade where the straight edge has this recess and um, this is exactly where you would expect um, damage to a sword when it's being used. Can you point this out to us again? Okay, now, now, lift, exactly, now lift the sword so we can get an idea where in the blade we see this, we see this recess. So as you can see, it's relatively far up the top. Can you show, point it out again? So that's in the top third, and that's uh, it's, it's more or less. It's more or less at the border. It's, it's a bit higher than the border between the top and the middle third of the blade. I see. Yeah. And okay, you see, a, and yeah. sorry, you see that the calendar is following this shape. So this recess... If you just hold it down a little bit, so I get some light. Yeah, now I okay. get some light on it. You see that the, the outline of the calendar is following that recess. So that recess is older than the calendar, it belongs to the 13th century blade. Yeah, so um, these parts of the blade which have been repolished, where potential nicks were polished out, yeah, they are medieval, yeah. and, and they are they are pretty much where we expect where we usually um, see this happening to our fencing swords, uh, the sharp ones. It's about this area and slightly further up, right? Yeah, and and you see that uh, you have that recess on one side very prominent, 
So maybe there was a, a stronger notch or this was the, um, the blade that has been used the most. You see slightly on the other side too. Yeah. If you just put it down onto uh, the surface, just lay it flat on the table. Maybe the camera catches it from above. So I don't really know if it shows, but... It's a very slight recess on the other side. Pretty cool. <laughs>